So that is not really possible. But you can obstruct the stream of faculties that come to attack the mind or make decisions for you. So by meditation, we master the technique of mastering the mind. Now when I say mastering the mind, the mind is there. The itch will come. You don't have to scratch. As simple as that. The mind creates all kinds of things. And I'm sure many of you who meditate, you would have found that as soon as you sit, that's the time something is biting your butt. And then you want to scratch. The mind will distract you all the time, continuously, so that you can become a slave to the mind and the mind will remain the master. Whereas by, by continuous meditation, you become the master and the mind will become your slave. And that is the ideal situation, to make the mind your slave, because there are many things in the mind that you need. For, this, for example, the mind will tell you that you need a new jersey. And if you really need a new jersey, you can't shut that off. But there are many things the mind will tell you that you really don't need. I want to buy a Porsche. <laughs> mind will tell you that. And every time we, we drive past the 7 Series BMW, my son shows me the 7 Series BMW. He would sign to alter my mind. But I pretend I didn't hear him and he said, I was just talking to you, Dad. I said, oh, I was sleeping. You see, because once you start to alter your mind, it will become so strong against you that most of the time you fail. Many people have done wrong things because they did not listen to the other thing. Something told me. We, we always hear that line, something told me not to go. Something told me I should buy this. Something told me we, we talk like that. And what is this something? There's something exists in us. And because it exists in us, it protects us continuously. Without, without a doubt. I've been protected by this something many, many times. And it is only possible because the mind is not the master. So it can't block these positive thoughts that come to you. How often you were sitting in your, in your lounge or lying in bed and something told you, just go check the door, it might not be locked and the door is not locked. We've had those experiences. We get up out of the bed and we find maybe the gate's not shut, the door is closed but not locked. Now we need to continuously follow this something and this something can only be followed through meditation. So there are four factors in, in this yogi principle. The first most important factor is what all of you call yoga. All of you. If I ask you where you're going, I'm going to yoga class. There is no such class. There is no such class anywhere in the world. Because to do yoga, you've got to do a series of limbs of yoga to complete the complete set of yoga, which is eight limbs. But what you're going for is only the third limb of yoga called asana. What is called an? Asana. Asana. You got it? Yeah. So, the third limb of yoga is called asana, which you call yoga. So basically, we're taking one aim of what we know and making it the whole. So, then, most of the yoga schools don't teach it to many. Once you go there, you do your, your astanga, your hatha yoga, whatever yoga you're doing, raja yoga, then sit and meditate. But meditation is a process. So the first aspect of the Patanjali Yoga Sutra or the Raj Yoga or the Kriya Yoga that is taught by Babaji, the first element is Yam. In Yam, we have to worry about how we live. How we live. When I say how we live, we don't desire what other people have. We don't, and 
That is one of it. There are many. And this is not a Patanjali discourse, so I'm not going to go through all this. Next one is Niyam, the way of life, meat eating. The first aspect of the Ten Commandments of the Hindu Dharma is Ahimsa, non-killing and non-injury. So, if we can live hum, Yam and Niyam, then we come to Asana. Now, when you go to the yoga class, you might have just had a fight with your boyfriend, you might have just had a fight with your girlfriend, you might have just had a fight with your husband or wife, and in the anger you're going to go and take this frustration out in the yoga class. No yam, no niyam. Do we understand? When you go there, you must already, already be in a serene state. You must already be in a, in a peaceful state. Then you do asana. Asana, asana is a scientific art of body flexation how we can flex your body. It is not about making a perfect posture. Many yoga teachers will tell you you must make a perfect posture. If that is important, then yoga is no good. Because if we take Mr. Mr. Uh, Ranjit Singh, the gentleman in the glasses there, I can't get him to make any perfect posture at his age. But he can do asana. He can bend, that his toes, even if he bends his knees, can stretch his legs and do mukhana, trikhana, asana, whatever. But he can do that. So it's not about perfection, it's about dedication, discipline and devotion, the three Ds. That is the most important aspect of yoga. Teachers will tell you, how many of you heard of uh, Ayenga? Ayenga is the most perfect yoga teacher. Now, I'm not using the word perfect in the sense that you're thinking every posture of his must be perfect. Now, that is for these children. You can make a perfect posture if you're under the age of 10. Perfect. But after that, you, you have your own body adjustments that you have to make. After doing asana, now we go into the most important aspect of yoga. The first aspect of yoga is pranayama. Pranayama is a scientific art of mastering the breath. So we have different kinds of breathing. Uh, when we are running, when we are in fear, what we do? We breathe fast. Our heart beats fast. Everything in our life is determined by the rate of our breathing. The slower you breathe, the more correct the decisions will be. The faster you breathe, the decisions are generally in the bush. Okay? Because at that moment, you want to make a decision. So that is called pranayama. So prana is the breath. Pranayama is a technique. So it is a scientific technique of mastering the breath. After that, we come to what we call pratyahara. This is the most beautiful description uh, in the Patanjali Yoga Sutra. It is said, when you start to rest in the tranquility of your mind. By now, after doing pranayama, you store your breath, your mind is in tranquil state. You can try it. Even when you, if you're going to sleep and you can't sleep, change your breathing. Breathe slower and see you'll fall off to sleep in no time. Because tranquility comes in. In Pratyahara, you rest there and get ready for what we call dharana. Dharana is contemplation. What is contemplation? Shiva Ham. I am Shiva. Brahma Aham. I am Brahma. Om Namah Shivaya. Shiva is great. This is contemplation. A Christian, hallelujah, is contemplation. I want to be one with Christ. That is contemplation. So we have this contemplation which we call dharana. After we master the technique of dharana, we come to dhyana, the scientific art of mastering the mind, which in English is called meditation. Now, in meditation we have some requirements. 
So in, 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 in uh, chapter 11, uh, Krishna talks to us about how we should have our seat. And even in, in the, as ancient times as 4,000 years ago, they asked you to sit with your hip higher than your knee. Your hip should not be lower than your knee because you would disturb your, your sitting within a few minutes. So you have a raised to 100 millimeters high, that is 10 centimeters high. When you sit on that, your knee will be below and you can do any posture you want in your Padmasana. Okay. So you sit properly and you again start your pranayama. You are now in the tranquility of the mind. You are now in perfect contemplation. Now you control your breathing. So you breathe slower and slower and slower till you don't realize that you're breathing. Till your awareness is not there anymore. That is meditation. You don't worry about what your boyfriend said 10 years ago. You don't worry about what was on the stove. You don't worry about anything. You're just in this tranquil state. So that is meditation. And when you master that technique, then we come to what we call samadhi. Total eternal bliss. Total eternal bliss. And what is total eternal bliss? In chapter 2 of the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna states, the total state of equanimity. That is a state of equanimity. That means you don't see right and wrong. You don't feel pain and pleasure. Everything you see in the same light, which is not possible for people who have just started yoga or in this material plane. So we may have that. While we're still there, then we have the different chakras, which is also affected and gives better effects to your meditation. So they, one of the instructions is sit erect. Why you have to sit erect? So your spine can be aligned, the chakras can be aligned, and you can pick up the energy from the field of energy from the ground, from grounding, and set it up your spine in your suspana to your crown chakra. That is the reason. So, I know many of you would like to go into the state of samadhi. I know that kid sitting there uh, with the glasses, he wants to go into the state of samadhi. And for the first time he came to the ashram, how oh, what time can I go into samadhi? <laughs> I said, it doesn't happen like that, right? So he believed that you go and see a guru, you sit in front of him and attain samadhi. It took me 46 years. So it's not something that you can just get like that. It takes you a long time, you know. So we, we need to understand that. So you, we're going to meditate now. We're going to have very good light music in the background. Every now and then I will talk to you in your meditation. You just don't worry about opening your eyes. I'll be sitting here all the time. Don't look where I am. Just listen to what I'm saying and I'll take you to another level of meditation. Okay, so let us be comfortable. Are you comfortable? Name? Jane. Jane, are you comfortable? Breathe in and breathe out. 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 Breathe in and breathe out.
and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in. Oh. 
love.